A power clean is an exercise that consists of quickly and forcefully pulling the bar from the floor to the front of the shoulders all in one movement. Although the ascent consists of four phases, the upward movement of the bar occurs in one continuous motion without interruption. So for my starting position, I'm standing with my feet placed between my shoulders, so they're shoulder width apart, my toes are pointed slightly outward. The bar needs to be a little bit closer to my shins because it's supposed to be approximately one inch in front of my shins and over the balls of my feet. Um, I need to squat down a little bit lower because my hips should be lower than my shoulders, even though they are right now, I still feel like I could go lower because my chest would be held up and out if I went lower, and my head would be in line with my vertebral column. Um, my shoulders need to be a little bit more over the bar and my eyes need to be focused straight ahead. Um, my hands are placed on the bar slightly wider than shoulder width apart outside of the knees, but I do need to fully extend my elbows because right now they are not fully extended. So for the first pull phase, you need to lift the bar off the floor by forcefully extending your hips and knees. You should not let your hips rise before my sh your shoulders, which I did not. You should maintain a neutral spine position, which I did. You should keep your elbows fully extended, pointed out to the side, and your shoulders slightly over or ahead of the bar. I could work on all of those things. Um, and then as the bar is raised, you want to keep it as close to your shins as possible. That's also something I need to work on. For the transition phase, as the bar rises above the knees, you thrust your hips forward and slightly flex the knees to move the thighs against and the knees under the bar. Keep your back neutral and your elbows fully extended, pointed out to the sides. So the transition phase is similar to the RDL, um, and most weightless lifters use the RDL to strengthen that movement pattern. Um, I know that I could, I do RDLs all the time, but I don't know what I'm doing in this video. Sorry, it's horrible. Um, but also I need to keep my heels on the platform the entire time because your heels are what you use to drive up through the movement. So, um, that's a no, no. I need to keep my heels on the platform and not jump. So the second pull phase is the next phase. It's a pretty explosive phase. Um, you rapidly extend your hips, knees, and ankles, keeping the bar as close to your body as possible. And it's important that your heels stay in contact with the floor for as long as possible so that you can maximize your force transference to the barbell. You need to keep your back neutral, elbows pointed out to the sides, and extended for as long as possible. As always, shoulders over the bar. Those are all things that I could work on. Um, and then when your lower body reaches its full extension and your shoulders reach your highest elevation, um, you rapidly shrug your shoulders upward and you flex your elbows um, to begin pulling the body under the bar. The next phase is the catch. So after your lower body is fully extended, you pull your body under the bar, rotate your arms around and under the bar, and you flex your hips and knees at the same time into a quarter squat position. I need to go lower into my squat, and I did a pretty good job of racking the bar across the front of my clavicles and the interior deltoids. I could keep my elbows out a little bit more into a front squat position, and I need to catch the bar with a nearly erect torso, my shoulders slightly ahead of my hips, a neutral head position, and flat feet. Flat feet is definitely something that I need to work on. Then after you gain control and balance, you stand up by extending your hips and knees to a fully erect position. I, I did this, but there's definitely a lot of things that I need to work on. So the last phase of this movement is the downward movement phase where you lower your elbows to unrack the bar and then slowly lower the bar down to your thighs while flexing the hips and knees to cushion the impact of the bar on the thighs. I did not do this movement slowly at all whatsoever because I was just excited to have completed this lift because it was the first time I did it. Um, and then the last part is squatting down with your elbows fully extended until the bar touches the floor or you can just drop the bar to the platform. I just dropped the bar to the platform since I had rubber bumper plates. But I did not do this phase at all in the correct way. So for the major muscles being used, um, it's a lot. Um, it's your gluteus maximus, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, biceps femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, vastus medialis, rectus femoris, soleus, gastrocnemius, deltoids, and trapezius. Um, so basically, your core, your quads, your hamstrings, your calves, your glutes, those are all the driving forces behind most of your movement. And then when you go up into your second pole, your traps and your shoulders are engaged. Um, but your arms, your forearms, your back, they also get involved um, throughout the, the four phases. So basically this exercise works your entire body.
So for breathing techniques, this is going to apply to all the exercises that I have done. Um, you're going to exhale through the sticking point of the concentric phase and inhale through the eccentric phase. Um, I know a lot of um, like heavy lifters and people who lift a lot, they attempt the Vesalva maneuver, which helps to maintain proper vertebral alignment and support. Um, I don't really ever lift heavy. I have no need to do that or try that. So that's my take on breathing techniques. But basically, you exhale through your sticking point of the concentric phase and inhale through your eccentric phase. Spotting techniques. So for power movements, power exercises, anything Olympic lift related, don't need spotters. You don't want spotters. Don't ever spot a power exercise. End of story. Done. Okay, so for the back squat, I'm using a pronated grip with a common grip width. This is pretty normal um, for a back squat. And then I, since I'm inside of a power rack, I do not need spotters. But if I was out of the rack, I would need two spotters, one on each side. Um, I love doing the back squats because I was a soccer player and that's really the first lift I ever learned. Um, but my the bar is in a high bar position, so that's my starting position. Um, my feet are parallel to each other, which is also part of my starting position. In this video, my feet are wider, which um, I like to do because I like to work my butt a little bit more. Um, but your chest should be held up and out, your head tilted slightly up, and then you should extend your hips and knees to lift the bar, take one or two steps backward, and your feet should be shoulder width apart. I definitely do all of these things. For the downward movement phase, you should maintain a position with their back neutral, elbows high, chest up and out, allow your hips and knees to slowly flex while keeping your torso to floor angle relatively constant. Keep your heels on the floor with your knees aligned over your feet and then you continue flexing your hips and knees until your tops of your thighs are parallel to the floor and or your heels rise off the floor. Um, I like flexing my hips and knees until my tops of my thighs are parallel to the floor. I always like to reach my lowest squat position, so that's what I'm trying to do in this video. So the last phase is the upward movement phase where you maintain a position with a neutral spine, high elbows, and your chest up and out. I'm doing that, and then you extend the hips and knees at the same rate so that your torso to floor angle is constant with your heels on the floor and your knees aligned over your feet. I've done the squat multiple times so I'm pretty used to the right form so I think I'm doing this correctly. Um, you do not flex your torso forward or round out the back and you continue to extend your hips and knees to reach the starting position. Once you're done with that you step forward towards the rack and you squat down until the bar rests on your, the supports. I've always loved going really low on my squats. Um, I like doing high reps with low weight because now that I'm not trying to build muscle I'm just trying to maintain it. I feel like that has worked for me and will continue to work for me since I'm not an athlete anymore. So for the major muscles being trained, um, it mainly has to do with your lower body, so I'll just go ahead and read them off. Your gluteus maximus, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, biceps femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, vastus medialis, and rectus femoris. Um, but I would say like your quads and your glutes are probably the like most powerful muscles that drive your movement. Um, I know like a lot of girls my age think that squats are mainly just to build your booty or whatever and there's different variations where you can build up your quads or you know focus on your hamstrings like whatever I, I don't I don't really know don't pay attention to all that nonsense but I know that they strengthen almost every muscle in your lower body like your quads glutes hamstrings calves and even your core muscles so um I really love the squat. I think it's a great lower body exercise, and that's usually my go-to exercise every time I go to the gym, so. So, a couple of things that I want to address. Um, the most important things, I guess, for a lower body plyometric exercise, which is what I'm doing, are points of contact, um, speed of the drill, height of the drill, and body weight. 
Um, so those are the most important because they infect the intensity of um, your workout. Um, but basically, if you want to, you know, increase the intensity, you could increase the speed or make the box higher. Um, I know sometimes I like add a weight. I hold a medicine ball or I hold a plate in front of me or above me. Um, that's a lot harder, but I do that to increase the intensity. But for the purpose of this video, I don't have any weights. I don't have anything. It's just a low intensity type of box jump. So keep watching. So for this box jump, you're jumping in a vertical and slightly horizontal direction, but for your starting position, you'll be facing the plyometric box in a comfortable upright stance with your feet shoulder width apart. Um, there's three movements in this phase, preparatory, upward, and downward. So for the preparatory movement, you're going to begin with a count counter movement um, and then for your upward movement you jump onto the top of the box using both legs and for your downward movement you land on both feet in a half squat position down step down from the box and repeat um, i'm doing all of these movements in my box jump what i notice is that i'm landing on the balls of my feet instead of the heels um, that does affect my landing um, but i was just trying to land quietly so i know that's something that i could work on is landing on my heels instead of the balls of my feet um, and then for my arms I could swing my arms a little bit more backwards to get a little bit more momentum within my jump so for your muscles being used and your body parts being trained um, it's a lower body plyometric exercise so obviously all of the body parts being trained are within your lower body um, and the specific muscle groups that you're working are your glutes calves quads hamstrings um, so a lot of your lower body muscles. Um, box jumps help you become faster, they help you become more powerful, and if you do them right and for a while, they help you burn calories and increase your heart rate. I've always loved doing box jumps just because with soccer, um, we always did those to increase our power and speed. Um, and yeah, so yeah, that's my exercise technique assignment. Um, I wish I could go to the gym and actually do these with the correct technique and the correct form, but I did the best I could with what I have. Um, and then in case you forgot for the breathing techniques, I had already mentioned those in the beginning of the video. It's pretty much the same for all the exercises. Um, but yeah, hope you like it. Thank you.